the real big thing, one of my main concerns really about the Phantom 3 uh, was the, the batteries because whilst I love the smart features, the, the, the battery meter, the fact that it's got uh, self-discharge after a configurable number of days from 2 to 10, the, the, it's got a very good flight time, the density on this is really good. The cost is, is really high though. Uh, this is um, more than 10 times the cost of my Phantom 1 batteries. Now it does last longer, it probably lasts three times as long reliably. I was reliably getting five minute flights on the Phantom 1 and I'm pretty convinced I'll reliably get 15 minute flights on these. That's still an awful lot of money for a battery. So to protect your investment, it, I think personally for me it's really important. Firstly, you're going to have to have two or three batteries so you can get decent flights in. So that's a, a big investment. The, um, so the first thing I did was, it's really important I, for me that if I see good weather I can fly fairly quickly. So for my normal flight lipos I have a, a bank of charges so I can charge up very quickly. So I wanted similar for this. So the, the Phantom comes with uh, the, the charger which can charge your battery or the transmitter but they say not to do both at once. But I would suggest buying another one. So I bought um, a second charger. So I've got two chargers so I can charge two of the flight batteries together or I can charge the transmitter and the flight battery together so I can do all my batteries and the charger in and the transmitter in sort of two passes. So looking at about 40 minutes on the 100 watt charger, that means that in an hour and a half I can be ready to fly. So if I look and the weather looks good for the next day, or even if I get up in the morning and it looks like a nice day, if I fire up the chargers, literally by the time I'm ready to leave, I've got everything charged and ready. The other thing is you don't really want to leave these batteries full for exactly the same reason that it's going to reduce their life. And given how expensive they are, that's really important to manage. So uh, you can um, ideally just fly a little bit to take the edge off the battery. Anything under sort of 80% is going to be okay for storage for, for a few days or a week. For long-term storage, you want to try and get it accurately down. This, these discharges uh, with a light bulb are, are pretty cheap, so I just bought one of these on eBay. This again was uh, £7.83 delivered. Now the, the, the way the bulb is held is not ideal, so what I've done is I've got a, um, a soldering iron stand which I use just to hold that bulb. So, but you could make, um, you know, you just use a clip or something. You, you just want this bulb to be away from the battery. You don't want it to melt or damage the battery. Also, you don't want it to melt or damage your furniture or uh, anything else, your belongings. So the bulb gets really hot. So you'd stick that in there and then you just turn on the, the battery and that will then fire up. It's monitoring the voltage. So that light bulb is running now. And when this drops down to 3.85 volts per cell, which is you know a reasonable storage charge, then this will cut out and it'll beep and the light bulb goes out. So you know then that's okay for storage. It also has a deep discharge option where once it's got to that point, there's a little button underneath. You can push that and that will then run down to 3.5 volts under load, which is a long-term storage level. Uh, DJI recommend every 20 flights that you would uh, dis deep discharge the battery. They say to 8%. Now you could do that by flying. Obviously, there you go, that's cut out now. So that's down to 3.85. And then if you want to push the button again, that will then come on again and it will run, run down to 3.5 volts, which, uh, which for long-term storage or for that deep cycle that DJI recommend, I think that would be good. Or you could just fly. Um, personally, I'd be nervous to fly down to 8% battery because it's not going to be any fun. You're just going to be hovering a few feet off the ground and hoping nothing goes wrong. So personally, I'd rather do that on the bench. I have a big discharge rig for my uh, radio control lipos, so this is a, a nice cheap way of doing the same. Um, so that's I think a useful thing to th consider. The other thing is lipo bags. These are really a safety feature. Given that these batteries are expensive, you really don't want them getting damaged. So it's, it's a nice little bag that keeps them safe, stops anything shorting out the contacts. In the worst case where a battery did um, start to self-destruct, they will vent gas that burns, so they will occasionally spurt a flame out. And it only lasts for a few seconds, but it's a very hot flame, so it would set light to anything it was nearby. So the idea of these LiPo sacks is that they've got a, a basically a fireproof interior. So you can put this battery in there, and if that did catch fire, it would still burn, but it would, it wouldn't, the, f the flames would not leave the bag, so it's unlikely to set something else on fire next to it. So again, these are only a couple of pounds, so I would suggest keeping these for storage, store the battery in. The other reason to do this is because these batteries are smart LiPos, they will actually discharge themselves after a configurable time. They come as 10 days. So if it's fully charged, after 10 days of inactivity, 
it will run itself down to 65%. Now that should be a safe process. It'll do that by generating some heat, um, but not a lot because it takes two days to discharge. But for my own peace of mind, I would personally rather that was stored somewhere safe. So using these little IPO bags, again, they're a couple of pounds, so I really recommend it's a good thing to have.